2015, 2015, 2015 list, the best 50 albums from 2015, the list is going to be filled with the best albums of 2015, and yeah, I think this is actually one of the better years of this decade, to be honest, I think there were so many frigging great albums, that's why I've extended this one to a 50, just like the 2013 list, so yes, I hope you enjoy the list. Hope this brings out some recommendations, and I hope you don't get too mad at my picks. Buffalo Staple, that's you. You're gonna get mad at my picks. Number 50, Tribulation with the Children of the Night. This is a great metal record. And at number 49, we have a really catchy as hell rock album from a band called Royal Headache. Um, yeah, these were cool band camp band that I discovered. Uh, it's really catchy as hell, you should check him out. Number 48, uh, Benjamin Clementine with his very, um, you know, Victorian-esque album, at least for now. I really love the aesthetic to this one. And number 47, the best band name, apart from King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard, um, Pink Shiny Ultra Blast with their album, um, Everything Else Matters. They're a Russian shoegaze band. 46, Lower Dens with Escape from Evil, and at number 45, The World is a Beautiful Place, Harmlessness, Harmlessness is the album, yeah, yeah. 44, Black Metal Band, Panopticon with Autumn Eternal, they're just such a consistent metal band, to be honest, they could make every year-end list. And then number 43, the UK hip-hop-ish band, Sleaford Mods. Key markets. Number 42, a massive return to form from Lupe Fiasco um, with Tetsu and Youth, um, and then he ruined all our lives by releasing Droga Slide. Um, why did he do that? I do not know, but Tetsu and Youth is honestly such a great album. Number 41, The OCs with Mutilator Defeated at Last, a really cool psych rock band. I'm sure some of you will have already heard of by now. And then number 40, the very mixed received album from Grimes Are Angels and you know it was to me her best album I thought previous stuff from Grimes was so bad honestly but this one I thought was great so I don't know I don't know yeah. 39 Odyssey with the good fight I love Odyssey honestly I wish more people talked about the guy he puts out some of the best hip-hop albums over the past few years he really needs more attention and then 38 Laura Marling again this time with short movie, um, yeah, she's pretty much been on most of my year end lists up until this point that I've made, um, she's just great. 37 would have been so high on the list if it wasn't so fucking long, seriously, I just can't bring myself to sit down for three hours to listen to this, who has the time? But when you do listen to it, it is worth it, the epic, Kamazi Washington, you know, it's so long, it's such a gargantuan uh, jazz album. I nearly said rap then, there's no rap on this, don't worry. It is jazz, it's amazing, but so long, I can't listen to it that often, so it can't be that high on the list, unfortunately. Leviathan, Scar Sighted, um, fucking crazy black metal album. Um, yeah, this is insane. At 35, I've got Uncommon NASA with Halfway, a really cool album discussing how um, death is sort of looming over his mind because he is at the halfway point of his life. This is honestly so good. My favourite from him in his discography. And then 34, Billy Woods, of course. Today I wrote nothing. This guy is so consistent with his output. This is another great one. Add two at 33. Pray for the poor. Hip-hop heads need to go try this one because this is such a good hip-hop album. My god. Yeah, this is great. 32. <laughs> You're going to be surprised, but I don't care, man. Marina and the Diamonds Fruit. Honestly, this is such a good pop album. Every track is just produced so well. And Marina is a great singer. She has pretty good lyrics as well. It, one of my closest friends is the reason why I got into her music. But honestly, this is good. 31, The Underachievers with Evermore, The Art of Duality. A great album. And then at number 30, Destroyer with Poison Sea. So, uh, I love Destroyer. Destroyer is great. Leanne La Harvest at 29 with Blood, a really nice soulful inspired pop singer. And then 28, Chesky or Chesky with Broken Bone Ballads. This guy managed to incorporate elements of folk into hip hop, which usually you'd think sounds terrible, but he managed to do it. And I like this guy. This is a pretty good album. 
27, Viet Cong with their self-titled debut. Honestly thought this was way better than the preoccupation stuff they went on to do. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't really into that at all, but this was really good. And then 26, Alabama Shakes with sound and color. That was a terrible impression, fucking hell. <laughs> Yes, I like Alabama Shakes. This was way better than their debut as well. Their debut felt pretty generic, but on this one, I felt like there was so much passion in the vocals. Fucking hell, like on Doe on a Fight, tracks like that. Yeah, this is so good. At 25, one of the few trap albums I think that actually works all the way through without really getting boring or redundant, Travis Scott's Rodeo. Uh, 25, for oh, the Unknown Mortal Orchestra album Multi Love, the Psych Pop album of the year for sure, and then at number 23, Proto Martyr with the Agent Intellect, which was the post-punk album of the year for sure. J-Rock at 22 with 90059. Honestly, why don't more people talk about this? I mean, this was a lot better than what people said it was. Seriously, I am kind of annoyed that more people didn't praise this one. This is such a good TDE release, I don't really see people's issue with this. J-Rock, J-Rock's, J-Rock's good, guys. And Chelsea Wolf 21 with Abyss. Yeah, this was like, like the darkest album she put out. Um, fucking hell, this one was insane. Top 20, top 20, top 20. One other tricks point never, Garden of the Leeds. Fuck, yes. This was like an artist crafting Everything they'd done up until this point, but just doing it to perfection, like everything he had done. I mean, Replica and R Plus 7 were amazing albums, but I feel like this one just captured everything he was always trying to do into one album and just made it so much thicker with like the sounds and just he packed so much into some of these tracks as well. It just kind of made your mind just go, Ooh. but yeah. One of Tricks Point Never, one of the most talented electronic producers of this generation, absolutely. 19, Clarence Clarity, one of the coolest electronic pop producers um, around right now. He is so talented, he makes such eccentric pop songs, but they're so catchy as well, like you can't even like fathom how he's able to do it in such a weird and whirling way, and yet you just want to dance to some of these tracks because it's just done so friggin well he's even produced for other artists and that's starting to come out as being some excellent like pop music i just feel like in the future we're going to hear more from this guy he's going to be like producing some huge albums and singles i think and yeah no now is just so good 18 another friggin talented electronic pop producer who has an insane future ahead of them, I think. Um, Sophie with Product. This was such a short, like 25 minute album. It compiled all of her like singles that she'd done up until this point. And oh man, some of these songs just still to this day when I hear them, I'm just like, what the fuck? How did she do this? Like Lemonade, Jesus Christ, that track is just such a banger. And I'm trying to think of the other one, that's such a weird one. I can't quite think of the title right now. MSM, MMM, MSM, MMM is the one I'm thinking of where the beat is just so friggin' weird. Like you just wonder how the hell she was able to do this and hard as well. L O V E, like, oh man, like there's, there's elements of actually catchy like melodies on these tracks, but at the same time, like they're sort of all over the place and chaotic and crazy. Yeah, I think we're going to hear a lot more music like this in the next decade, I, I can sense it. 17, Baroness Purple, fuck. What a great rock album this is. Shock Me, one of the best songs of the year as well. Oh, I really love this album. I think it was just such a good stoner rock album. Um, and annoyingly, it didn't really make it on that many year-end lists because this was one of those December albums and all those stupid publications do the November to November thing. So then this one kind of just got left by the wayside. But luckily there were a handful of people that did find like how great this was because this is such a good rock album. Um, yeah, I always point to Baroness when people like say, ah, oh, rock music now these days isn't that good. But Baroness, they, 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 they will show you the way. Jamie XX in color. I love this album. I think Jamie XX um, really just 
showed some really cool ideas on this one. Um, actually had Young Thug and Popcorn on a track, which ended up being one of the best songs of the year. He also brought Romy back for Loud Places, which ended up being one of the best songs of the year. There are so many great highlights on this one. I think his production um, really shines on this one. I'd like to hear more solo stuff from him as well. I want to hear another album from this guy because the XX put out an album in 2017 and I thought it was pretty weak. So, you know, Jamie XX probably could just go solo at this point and just do his own thing because this proved that how good his ideas were. 15, Oort, Sun Coming Down. I loved more than any other day. It made it on my 2014 year-end list. But this is one of those albums where it just did everything the debut did so much better and I don't know how they were able to do it. Some of these tracks are like so long as well, like Beautiful Blue Sky where it just repeats the same line over and over again. Beautiful weather day, beautiful weather day, beautiful weather day. It's just, <laughs> he's such an eccentric vocalist. It really brings back that kind of like Talking Heads vibe, um, that television as well from like the 80s and 70s, like that kind of era, Gang of Four, just does all of that really well. And I think all have so much talent in them as well to make it not like, oh, they're ripping off that era. No, they're actually really honing in on that sound and providing a really unique perspective on it. I love all, they're such a fun band. Milo, So The Flies Don't Come. This is his best album easily, hands down. I just think it's such like a warm album. I think all the beats were really kind of subtle, but Milo just comes in on these tracks just with his usual witty lines. That humor's still there as well. He has Samuel T. Herring on a track from Future Islands who came under in, in a different pseudonym, but actually raps incredibly well. So <laughs> that guy's hella in talented. Uh, hella, 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 hell. I don't even know what I'm saying. He's talented. He's talented. I, yeah, but Milo on this one. He, I, this was my favourite from Milo. Honestly, this is just like such a clever album. His wordplay, his rhymes, he's just one of a kind, honestly. And the way he kind of just has such a conscious like mind on how like things are in the modern day society, but just does it, it just like speaks on it in a funny way. Um, I, I appreciate stuff like that, and Milo's one of the only ones around that can do it as well as this. Joey Badass, Before the Money, better than All American Badass, I don't care what you all say, this was way better than that album, seriously. Yes, number 99, where he just uses his Jamaican influence into the beat, it's fucking crazy. We got Christ Conscious, which is just a genuinely great pop rap track. Um, this album was filled with some of his best ever songs. Honestly, I think Joey Badass does need to be talked about more um, in the hip hop head game, really, because he has so much talent and he understands like the political angle of modern day as well in America. But he doesn't really like shove it in your face on this album. I felt like he did a little bit on All American Badass. It was just kind of like thrown at you and you're just like, okay, this isn't really what I wanted to hear. So if you want a less political version of that, this is the album and way catchier songs too. I think, um, yeah, my favorite album from Joey. Rolling a Cure by Bjork was just a beautiful breakup album and that is at my number 12. Yeah, this was crazy in the sound of production um, from Arca and Hacks and Cloak. They brought in this harrowing sound, this sort of just bare bones, chilling vibe to the album that honestly was just crazy to hear on some of these tracks and they just captured everything Bjork was feeling so well. Um, Bjork on this album, the lyrical game is just incredible. Um, it was just probably a best album in years as well because she went from Biophilia, which was okay. Before that there was Volta, which was all right. But then this one was just like, whew, like she just had all these new techniques in making her music, especially within the production and her singing, of course, was just amazing as ever. Even later into her career, she still has just a beautiful voice. Yeah, you know why this is on the list. This was just such an amazing album. Number 11, Young Fathers, White Men and Black Men 2. Probably would have been a much bigger and more successful album if it wasn't for 
um, the title like that. It's not exactly politically correct, is it? But this it was their best album, I thought. I honestly think tracks like Shame, um, what else is on that album? Oh no, my mind, my mind. Rain or Shine is ridiculously catchy. 27, this was like their version of an Ariel Pink album. Like before this, they were more hip hop influenced, but they like mixed hip hop with lo-fi indie pop. And it just produced such a cool sound. Honestly, um, Young Fathers really um, underrated, I think, because a lot of people just listened to this and thought it wasn't that great. Um, their album before that was, wasn't was well received, but ended up winning a Mercury Prize, which was very random as hell. But this is brilliant, honestly. I think the sound they produced on this album was such a good sound. Try it, just try it and see what you think. The top, 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 Show up, Ryan, what you're doing. Top 10. Algiers, of course. Gothic, post-punk, soul band. Fucking hell, the the styles and influences they throw in on this album are just insane. This was the most refreshing album of 2015. Like, listening to this was just like a new era of music. It was like... There was just no one out there doing anything like this. And you think sometimes, like, this is the kind of sound you th you would have thought you'd have heard by now, but you haven't. And Algiers were the ones to bring it out. They're politically charged. They're ferocious. The front man has an amazing voice. The music is just, again, like no other band out there. This was such a such a unique listen and I still listen to it now and think wow this is such a good album and wonder how they were able to do this and why no other band has tried doing it since. The indie darling that everyone loves at number nine, Sufjan Stevens with Carrie on Lowell. Oh man this was such a such a sad album. Seriously I listen to this and just want to cry. I, I want to cry. It's, it's such a sad album. Yeah this honestly um Probably not his best work, but I just think the ma the he, like how simple and just sort of minimalist it is in its sound and the sort of like any artist out there has done this in the past, but I just feel like Sufjan Stevens just brings so much heart to it in comparison to a lot of artists out there. Honestly, um, yeah, should have known better. Beautiful song. As for the rest of the album, it's heartbreaking, but I just feel like it's one of those albums that you need every now and then, you know? Just to kind of sit down and appreciate the beauty. Number eight, Zarface, Every Hero Needs a Villain. Seriously, this was a great hip-hop album. Um, it was like MF Doom uh, with its comic book themes and that kind of like uh, villainish vibe going through the album. But at the same time, it had those early Wu Tang Clan influences as well, like with the um, the group mentality, how all the rappers brought in their own ideas into the mix, their own styles, their own flows, their own unique personalities. It was such a good and like throwback of an album that kind of was necessary, I think, in twenty fifteen. Because not many artists like are coming out in in the group form anymore and dropping stuff like this. So yeah, I think this was quite a refreshing take um, in 2015 to hear, and it's a great album as well. Speaking of hip-hop groups, number seven, Injury Reserve, probably the best breakout hip-hop trio to come out in recent memory with Live at the Dentist Office. Yeah, this was such a great listen of an album. There are so many catchy songs on here, like TTKV, I think it's called. Um, Everybody Knows, uh, Whiplash is a great track too. Seriously, it's all, this album is filled with like hip-hop banger after banger. And they did actually go on to release an, an, another amazing album, but just to hear this come out um, was like really exciting at the time to wonder where they were going to go from there. Yo, Whatever Dude, Washed Up. Honestly, it's so frigging catchy, these tracks. And they still were able to show how good of uh, good how good they are at rapping as well. It wasn't just like your usual boring, um, you know, meaningless rap songs. They actually have some bars in them as well and incredibly catchy pop rap tracks. It just all came together so well. I love this album. Divers by Joanna Newsom and number six. On any given day, this could be my favourite 
Joanna Newsom album, but then sometimes it switches to Milk Eyed Mender. So I don't know, but I just think this album was, oh man, so beautiful. Sapernonikon, I think is how you say it. I don't even know how you say it, but that track is just like, ah. Uh, I just think the melodies on this album are like no other out there. I just think everything about it is so gorgeous. Like the production is just so gorgeous. Her voice is of course just the unique voice that you know from her now. Ah, oh, it's just such an album that puts a massive smile on my face when I hear it. I just think it's so well made and crafted like perfection. Seriously, if you've never tried Joanna Newsom, go listen to her because it's worth it. Number five, an album that I didn't like at first, but massively grew on me because obviously it's now my number five of the year. But everything, everything, get to heaven. I didn't appreciate the progressive pop elements mixed with like indie rock and sort of um, that block party-esque, um, like speedy drumming patterns that they have on here as well, like kind of like mathish inspired. Like, I didn't appreciate any of that. Um, on the first listen, but then I just, it clicked with me, like tracks like Regret, Distant Past, um, Spring, Summer, Winter Dread are just so catchy, like you just realise there are no other bands that really do this at all right now, and you just think, why aren't they getting as much recognition as they are, as they, as, as, as they should be? Like I think this sound is honestly quite difficult to replicate, and I didn't actually notice that initially, but after more listens, I began to appreciate it all and think that what they're doing right now is brilliant. And Get to Heaven is an amazing pop album that has so many unique elements to it that, pff, yeah, I just think this is really, really unique. And how many bands could do this, I don't think. Number four, my second favourite Death Grips record, The Powers Up B. Now, the first half of this is amazing. I mean, the way they interpolate Bjork's vocals in all the tracks is just genius. I mean, wow. And then the second half is completely different, honestly, with tracks like um, On GP, which is like a prog rock track, to be honest. And then Inanimate Sensation, which is just this fucking insane of a track that I, I just honestly don't know how they were able to do and that's the one thing about death grips that you just wonder all the time how they're able to do what they do um but yeah just both halves have just completely different sounds and yet they it fits all together into one album and it really works and i don't know how they're able to do it but yeah it's death grips so no one knows how they're ever able to do it um yeah it's friggin amazing one of the most clever romantic relationship albums you'll probably ever hear. Um, this is Father John Misty at number three with I Love You Honey Bear. I just think his cynicism on love and yet he still actually provides some really like beautiful lyrics about the person he's with. It, it, just that sort of like match of two completely different things comes into one album and I don't even know how he does it. Like, I can really relate to his crass humour, but at the same time, his, like, romantic sort of, like, gestures and his really poetic lyrics I can also relate to in a weird way. I just find it amazing how he's able to do it over these really beautiful chamber pop, airy, spacious instrumentals. Yeah, this was amazing, honestly. I think this is way better than pure comedy. I don't care what you're gonna say, but pure comedy to me was there. But I just kind of wish he went back to writing love songs because I think that's honestly what he does best. But I don't think he wants to do that anymore and that's fine. So I'm fine with going back to this album over and over again because, you know, this is just brilliant to me. But number two, we have another singer-songwriter that just tipped him to a higher position. And that is Julia Halter, Have You In My Wilderness. Wow, this was such a surprise of an album, honestly. These instrumentals are just perfect. Like, her voice is perfect. Feel You is genuinely quite catchy. We have Sea Calls Home, which is genuinely quite catchy. And yet, it's just all soaked in rich sounds that is like that Joanna Newsome album. It just puts a massive smile on my face when I hear it. But I just think it was so refreshing to hear this um, in 2015 because there were just no artists out there doing this style. She's sort of like a modern-day Nico from like the 60s, 70s era of that 
really um, artful pop sound that is very difficult to do and get right because often it just kind of sounds boring but there's nothing on this album that reeks of boring in any kind of way i'm captivated the whole way through i freaking love julie halter man she's amazing oh and what could possibly be my number one in 2015 what what could it be you know the album that was on everyone else's number one at the end of the year what is it what is it it's obviously taming parlor's currents <laughs> No, it's not that album. I didn't really like that album. <laughs> it's Tabimpa Butterfly. Obviously, it's Kendrick Lamar. This album was insane. Like, just the concept, the poem that he reads out to Tupac that you find out at the end. Spoilers if you haven't heard it already. Um, just that whole idea and the sort of um, caterpillar metaphor, like stucking a cocoon and tries to break out of like the poverty trap that they're stuck in right now in like modern day American society the politics on this album which you don't ha necessarily have to agree with but just reading into them how he makes it personal to himself and it's not like he's trying to lecture you about how things are he's just telling you exactly how things are from his perspective there are no rappers really out there that did it like this so like a lot of the time you just kind of get oh things are shit because of this but he's just really just saying no things are just shit and this is why things are shit but we don't really have an answer why because right at the end of the album you know he tries asking Tupac, Tupac isn't there no one's there to answer the question there is just no answers to solve all of this crisis that we're currently living in well not I'm in living in I mean I'm you know, I'm pretty privileged, but there aren't privileged people out there. And this is an album for those people that can relate to that. It's such a necessary album, I think, from this decade. Um, I think this is one of those albums that's needed, even if you don't enjoy it all the way through, because it's pretty long. It's very wordy. You have to listen to everything he's saying, but it is necessary. Tracks like All Right, which are just massive anthems. Then we've got King Hunter, which is just a G-funk brilliance and then we got black of the berry which is just so harsh and so to the point and just so blunt like friggin hell he just has everything scattered across this album all the different sounds all the amazing features like thundercat snoop dogg even comes in with an amazing feature rhapsody i fucking love her feature on this one best album of the decade i think and i don't even think many people are going to disagree by the end of the decade to be honest maybe people will say kanye west but really just the lyricism, everything about the concept here is just perfect. And that's my list, that's my list, that is my list. What do you think of this list? Tell me your list. What were your favourite albums of 2015? Do you think it was a great year for music, an okay year for music? Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed this list and got some recommendations. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.